So I'm here in iOS 13, and the biggest change uh, comes with Safari. So if I open up Safari, and I start off like at the Holman website, um, Safari is now a desktop class browser. And what that means is, is that when I open up things that typically required apps on the iPad, now I can do a lot of those things directly in uh, Safari itself without requiring uh, using a separate app to do that. So for example, from the Holman website, I have a link to Drive here. And if I tap on my Drive icon, uh, to go to Google Drive, I can now go to Drive right within uh, my browser without having to use the Google Drive app. And this looks exactly the way Drive looked um, on your laptop. The only difference is it's a little smaller just because of the size of the screen. But I get my waffle back and I can go and I can jump and see all of the uh, options that I had before um, in the desktop version. Now, the only problem with this that's going to take a little um, training to go with it, so let me try uh, and go ahead and open up uh, this Google Sheet right here. And if I double tap on it to open it up, notice it's not opening in the browser anymore. It is now kicking me into Google Sheets. Um, if there is an app on your iPad that is designed to run Google Things, then if I try to opening up that thing, it will default to that app. So for example, since I double clicked on a, um, a Google Sheet and I have the Sheets app installed, it's going to default still to the Google Sheets app. So in order to stop that, if I don't want that to happen, now maybe I do want that to happen and that might be okay with me, um, but if you've ever used the apps on the iPad compared to the desktop version, so Google Sheets on the, the Mac versus Google Sheets on the iPad, um, a lot of the iPad versions of the apps are kind of watered down. So there might be certain features that you want that don't exist, like add-ons or uh, some formatting options and things like that. So if I don't want this to open up in here, what I need to do is I need to actually delete the app. Uh, from my device. Now, normally, the way things work is the district would have things set up that whenever you would delete an app, it would come right back. Um, they have removed that with some of the Google apps so that you can actually now delete apps if you want to, and they will not come back. So, for example, I have my Google Sheets app uh, here in my um, iPad, and if I were to press and hold down with my finger, um, I get a new menu that pops up that didn't exist before. Um, and I can either um, go to edit home screen and it makes all the apps wiggle and it gives me the X in the corner. Or depending on the app, I may also get an option in that uh, menu that says delete app. So if I delete the Sheets app, it says, are you sure you want to do this? I hit yes. The Sheets app goes away. And now if I go back into Safari, I take that exact same Google form and double tap it. Because I don't have the Sheets app installed, it opens up live within my browser window, and now I have all of my same browser menus that I had before. Now, it may advertise and tell you, hey, you might want to get the Sheets app. I can just say, yeah, stop asking me. I'm good. Um, I did this on purpose, right? So I now have options that I didn't have before, like add-ons. I have all of my menus and all these things back um, that, again, may or may not have existed in the app instead. Now, if you ever change your mind and decide, oh my gosh, I don't like this, I wish I had it back to the way it was before, um, I can do that too. Um, you have what's called the app portal. And if I simply open up the app portal, the, the, um, all of the apps that are on your device from the district are still in here. So if you decide, you know what, I am not ready to live without um, Google Sheets yet, so I can go back here, I can tap on Google Sheets, and then there will be an install button in the upper right hand corner that I can tap on it to reinstall it. it takes about five minutes and it'll come back automatically without having to do anything so, so that's what that looks like now a couple other things to point out um, if I wanted to create a new document so I'm in drive and I hit new um, same as before I can create a new document I now get um, options like Google drawing uh, and Google sites which did not work without some workarounds on an iPad. I can now do those things on an iPad that I couldn't do before. Um, I've already deleted my Google Docs app, so if I hit Google Docs, 
it will create uh, a new Google Doc, all right? And again, it opens in the browser because I don't have the app. Uh, and again, it's gonna look and work. It reminds me, hey, are you sure you don't want the Docs app? I said, nope, not interested. And now I get all of my options I did before. I can double tap to start typing, and then I still have full version of Google. Uh, the other really cool thing that comes back is version history. So if I make some changes here, um, and then make some more changes here. At the top where it says all changes saved in Drive, um, I can tap on this and it will show me the version history of what changes have been made. Uh, and then I can tap on these three dots and either make a copy of this version, name this version, or hit the big blue button up here at the top until it's a restore to this version. All of that did not exist in the apps. So if a kid does something and loses all their work, they have the ability to go back through their version history to get it. And you have the ability to look and see what changes were made by group projects and things like that. Uh, you also have Google Classroom back. So if I'm in uh, Google Classroom, again, this is the desktop version of Google Classroom as opposed to the app version of Google Classroom. Um, it does tell me I still have the Classroom app here. I can open this class in the app if I'd like to. Um, the one thing I will tell you is that certain things in the apps are specific to iPad. So for example, um, Google Classroom has the ability to write or annotate onto documents. That only works in the app because the app is designed to work on an iPad with the Apple Pencil. Um, the desktop version does not allow annotation or you can't write on top of it. So for now, the only apps that the district is, is pulling or allowing you to delete are Drive, uh, Docs, Sheets, and Slides. They are keeping the Classroom app, they're keeping the Calendar app, Google Keep, and a lot of those other Google apps. The only ones for right now um, that we are getting rid of are Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and Google Drive, because those are the ones that really force things uh, into the app when you may or may not want to. And again, it's up to you if you want to delete those or not. Kids have the ability to delete these apps if you want them to be able to delete them. Um, they're just going to need some knowledge in order to show them how to do that. Um, to do that now, all of this only works if you've updated your device to iOS 13, which again is a free update. All I have to do is go into my settings app, and then tap on General, and then there's a button that says Software Update, and this will show you your update. There's probably a little red flag in the corner that you can tap and hit Update. It will take 30 minutes to an hour to update your device. Um, and it requires at least 50% of battery life in order to, to install that update. So, all right, that's uh, all on the changes in iOS 13. Let me know if you have any questions.